Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm here um, in the beautiful countryside of Estill, South Carolina at a friend's farm. We got here to get away from all the quarantine craziness and give ourselves a change of scenery and listen to some birds chirp for the day. So I thought I'd share that with you all in a simple 30 minute-ish practice, something that you can do that doesn't take a lot of your day up. I know um, a lot of you are doing a lot of great activities outside right now. So this is a good one just to throw in short before or after you do that. So start in a comfortable seated position. You can sit kneeling or cross-legged. Once you find a comfortable seat, allow yourself to kind of settle into your sit bones, the, the roots of your spine here, and grow tall in your spine. Feel free to close your eyes or even just take your gaze out in front of you on the ground. Give yourself some time to kind of settle in and just allow the momentum of your energy to settle just a bit. And notice your breathing. Encourage it to come through your nose, inhaling and exhaling. Tune into all the sounds that you might hear from this video, the birds chirping, maybe the sounds that you hear in the space you're in right now. Again, deepen your breath even more. So draw the inhale possibly for four or five counts in and match your exhale with that same duration. Do that two more rounds. the palms together, let your thumbs rest at the center of your chest. Take this moment to bring to mind all the things that you're grateful for right now. We have so much to be grateful for. And hold those qualities, that quality of gratitude right here in your heart, in the space. And say thank you all the goodness that you have in your life right now. Thank you. Release your hands, open your eyes. Let's make our way to our hands and our knees. Go ahead and curl the toes under and spread your fingers and get a good grip through all your fingertip pads. Let's inhale, drop your belly and pull the heart forward. Breathe out, round your spine. Give yourself a good cat back stretch. Keep doing these two motions at your pace. Synchronize your breath with your movement. One more round of this inhale. If the toes are not yet curled under, curl them under. And we'll meet in a downward facing dog pose. Set your feet a comfortable distance apart and allow the knees to bend a bit so you can get some, some traction in your whole spine. You might move around, kind of sway the hips, open up the sides of your body a little more. Take deep breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. Take two more deep breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. Each 
towards your hands, bend your knees, and take a big giant step right to the top of your mat space. Set the feet a couple fists apart distance. Soften the knees if that helps. And assume a ragdoll position. Allow your upper body really to just kind of pour over the lower body. There's many ways to practice ragdoll, so I want you to choose the one that's calling you out right now. Give your head a little nod out, a little shake out, and release any holding in the neck and the jaw. Deep breaths through the nose. Release your hands and come up into a halfway lift. Feel free to move the feet a little closer together. Take your bow with an exhale. Keep up to standing. So keep the knees bent if that helps you. Stretch up tall. Catch on to your left wrist and lean over to your right side. Take a good deep breath in through the left side rib cage. Come back through the center and touch onto your right wrist and do that same thing on this side. And bring your body back up to the center and reach up, look up. If you're outside, look up at the tree and we'll fold on forward with a big exhalation. Come into a halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Step back to downward facing dog pose. Give this a good deep breath. And pull forward to high plank with an in breath. You can lower the knees or you can keep your legs straight and strong. But pull forward a little bit and lower down as slow as you can, all the way to the ground. Bend your legs long. Lately, I've been bringing my feet a little wider because it just feels good in my back. And I feel like I can ground my toes more. You might try that. But hug the arms in. Pull the chest forward and activate the whole back body. So my hands aren't really doing a whole lot. They're doing some, but not a whole lot. Breathe. And then lower your forehead down. Go ahead and um, bring your knees wide, feet together. Take your way to child's pose. Just send your hips back to your heels. And with a deep breath, stretch your arms a little bit longer. And as you breathe out, let your hips sink a little bit more toward your heels. One more big breath cycle. And come back into hands and knees. Curl under your toes, send your hips up high, downward facing dog pose. And give it a good deep breath. Look forward to your hands. You can step up one big step, you can jump, you do what you like. I'm right into a halfway lift. Bow forward. Rise up, put off, and reach up tall. Stretch up, reach, gaze to the ceiling, the sky, and let's fold on forward. Breathe through a long spine, halfway lift. This time go high and low push-up. You can take it halfway down chaturanga or go to your belly. You have a choice, up dog or cobra pose. Take in a breath where you are and we'll send the hips high downward facing dog. One big breath in and a big exhale. And then look to your hands, feet to the top of your mat. Into a halfway lift. Lengthen your spine. And go ahead and fold forward. Sweep up high. Tadasana. Sit tall. Fold right back forward. Come into a long spine. High and low push up again. Let's move through this. If you want to skip that part, it's okay. You don't have to do that. You can move right into down dog if it feels more appropriate. Otherwise, move through your vinyasa. Big deep breath. Big exhale. 
Get your feet just a little closer together and send your right leg to the sky. Activate the arms and the palms, press them down, bend your knee in the air and open up your hip. Give this a couple of good breaths. Straighten out your right leg, square off your hips and breathe. Draw the knee into your nose, cheetah posture. Pull the belly in, send your leg to the sky, inhale. Pull the knee into your nose, cheetah. One more time, lift it up high. And pull the knee into your nose and step right between your hands. Find your way into a lunge with the back knee on the ground, maybe the back foot flat and climb up onto your right thigh. Sink the hips forward. Say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to your hips here. Reach your arms up to the sky. Allow the hips to sink a little bit more. Deep breathing. Give this one more big breath. Let your pants down near your right foot. Shift back your hips so your right leg will go straight. If you need to adjust where the leg is or the back knee is, please. Draw the toes towards your shin. Lengthen on your inhale over this right leg. And go ahead and bow right down over that thigh. Deep breathing. You want a little bit more in the outer right hip, the IT band, keep the toes flexed and draw the right pinky toe down towards the ground. And still continue to pull the right hip back. Just a few breaths here. Good. Right toes go back up to the sky, shift forward into your lunge and kick the back knee up and activate the left thigh. Reach your right arm to the sky for a simple twist. Possibly look up to your right hand. Keep the back leg active, really go for that strength in your rotation. Take one more breath. And even downward facing dog. So that could mean you go right to down dog. It can also include a vinyasa before that. So it's up to you. It's how you can create your own level of practice, always. And down dog, bring your feet a little closer. Again, left leg this time goes to the sky. Bend the knee, open up this side of your hip. Notice the right heel. Can you let it soften down a bit? That gives me a tremendous stretch in my hamstring and my Achilles. Straighten out your leg with a breath. Cheetah, knee to nose, squeeze in. Send the leg up high. Knee draws in. Get the cat back here. Pull in the belly and round the back. One more time. Draw the knee into your nose. Very quietly. Step your foot between your hands. Lower your back knee and back foot down. Come on up into this right hip stretch. Stay with your hands on your thigh or sweep your arms over your head. I can completely see why people want to live in the country. It is so peaceful and calm. Give yourself another good breath. We'll get into the hamstring action. So hands come down, shift back. So if I never come back, you know where I'll be. <laughs> it wouldn't take much. So draw the toes back. And if you want a little more in that left hip, go for it. Take the pinky toe down. This lights up this whole outside of your leg. Two more breaths. Left toes up, shift forward. Find your way back into that low lunge with your back knee lifted, back leg strong, and twist to your left. 
lift your left arm up, maybe look up. Some days my shoulder doesn't like that action in it, so I do this. This might work for you too. Give yourself one more big breath. We'll meet in down dog, your way through. You're back in a downward dog. Reconnect to all four points touching the earth. Reconnect to your breath. Notice how you feel in this specific moment right now. Give it one more breath cycle. And if you're stepping forward, step forward with the opposite foot, the opposite leg. Come right into a halfway lift. Keep my feet a little bit closer this time. Bow on forward. Chair posture. Bend the knees, round the heels. Sweep the arms up by your ears. And allow the hips to drop down. If you want a little bit more, pull the heels up off the ground and sink the hips just another fraction. Take a deep breath. Lower the heels, lower the hands, and fold right into you. Just the back of your neck, please. Halfway lift. High and low push up or you can go right back to downward dog. You can skip all this. Bend the right leg to the sky. Step your foot between your hands. Crescent lunge. I usually go a little wider with my crescent lunge, especially when I'm on an uneven surface. So find the width that works for you. And send your arms to the sky. Soften the back knee a touch and sink down. Kind of get into that left hip again. And create a little lengthening and possibly a little back bend here. Big, big breath. We're going for a twist. Left elbow hooks on your right thigh. Maybe left elbow hooks or left forearm hooks on your right thigh. You can always drop your back knee down to the ground. Need a shape that works for you and your body right now and just focus on your deep breath. Three. Two. Activate your back leg. One more breath cycle. Warrior two. Press into the front foot, ground the back heel. Windmill up, just like that. Sink in, gaze right over your front fingers. If it feels better for you to give your leg a break, you do it. Straighten and bend. There are no awards given to you for struggling, I promise. Palm spins in the front. Reverse your warrior. Give it a good deep breath, stretch high. Side angle. And the left arm up and over your ears. You can take your right arm down towards the ground. Activate your back foot. Activate your back leg. Twist open your whole left side. Go for one more big breath. Warrior two. Slowly rise on up. Sink in. Reverse your warrior. And come down. Frame your front foot. Again, you can go to down dog. You can move through a vinyasa. All of these up to you. Keep your left leg to the sky. Take a big step for crescent lunge. Again, be aware of how you set your footing. Arms straight to the sky. Soften the back knee. Good, breathe. 
Open your eyes. See something new. See something fresh. There's always something new to see. And take a full breath in. And we'll twist to your left side. Your elbow, hook your forearm. Lower the knee in the back. It's you. And twist. Keep breathing. I highly encourage you to get outside and practice. It's so beautiful to connect to nature. It's very calming. Take two more breaths. Warrior two pose. So ground your back foot as you come up. Use the strength of your front leg. Sink on in. Reverse this warrior. Stretch up and go back. Side angle posture. Either way. Could be different than the first side. As you press your back heel, the right heel, deep into the earth. Really activate that whole right side body and stretch. Give it two more good deep breath cycles. Let's meet in warrior two. Come up. Slowly take a breath in. Sink in. Reverse your warrior. Breathe. Low push up. Now's the time you do the whole vinyasa. Pull forward into up dog. Bend your hip high, downward facing dog. Hmm. Please take a full breath in. Big exhale. Get malasana pose, squat pose. Right at the top of your mat. So step your feet out wide. Heels in, toes out. Sink down into your hips. This one's a good challenge for me. It may be for you as well. So you can always take a block or some sort of object and sit on that. You can put a block or something between your hands. It gives you um, kind of a good counterweight and a, and a focus in front. You allow the hips to get heavy. Take your breaths in fully. Lean for three. hands down, slowly straighten your legs and turn your feet so they're straight ahead parallel. And either take your peace fingers to your big toes from the inside or go into gorilla where you step onto the palms, toes into the wrist joint. Take a breath to somewhat reset this. Let the weight shift forward more into the balls of your feet. Then fold. Let the weight of your head completely go. Open your eyes. Set the eyes at one place. One pointed vishti focus. Three more breaths. Release your hands. Bring them right to your hips. You can bend the knees, but ground the heels and come up through a long spine. Take your arms to the sky. Hands right by your side. Close your eyes. Take a moment to notice how you feel right now in this moment. Notice your feet on the earth. Notice everything between your feet and the top of your head. the weight into your left foot, hand to knee pose. So catch your right hand to your knee. Or if you wanted to go with a more of a active posture here, you can catch the big toe with your peace fingers. Whatever you do, lift from your heart. Activate your standing leg. Slowly open out to the right side. Really stand strong and stable in your standing leg. Strong at her hip. Shift your eyes to a fresh perspective. Gradually 
we come back to center. It might be wobbly. Take the arms over your head and straighten out your right leg if it's not already and point your toes. Lift from your thigh. So quad might feel it right in the belly for three, two, one. Foot comes to the earth. Ha! Let's go to side two. Left hand, left knee. Or a piece fingers to your left big toe. Bring it from your heart. Feel that lightness, feel that space. Open out your leg to the side. A little more lift in your chest. Slowly bring it back to center. Keep your leg up, please, and straighten it out if it's not yet. Point your toes, lift your thigh for three, two, one. Feet on the ground. Samastitihi. Ha. Since we're outside, we must do tree pose, right? So if you are outside or you can see nature from your window, I want you to focus your eyes on a beautiful tree somewhere out there in front of you. And we'll start with the right foot up to the left leg, somewhere above or below your knee. Good. A big action in balance is plugging into the standing big toe root. It's gonna activate the core of this left leg through the core of your body. I'll let you choose your arm expression, whatever you feel like today. Need another deep breath. Feet on the ground, trauma pose. Great job, other side. So left foot comes up. Press this right hip into your left foot and get tall. Peace is good right now. You might take on your peace tree. Extend, breathe. Be grateful for this breath, this beautiful day, this wobbly pose to keep you humble. One more deep breath cycle. Samastitihi, feet on the ground. Come back to the top of your mat if you're not there yet. Sweep your arms over your head. Take your bow, fold and forward. Keep into a long spine. High and low push up. We're gonna meet in a downward dog position, so take it your way. hands a little closer together, maybe your thumbs touch. Step your right foot to the outside of your right hip. Going towards lizard, so a little bit deeper in the hip. You can lower the back knee and take your, your legs a little wider. I like to turn my toes out. Come down to your elbows, your forearms, if that's a possibility today. Allow the hips to shift forward. Propping your elbows up on something is really a helpful tool as well. Notice any discomforts and kind of like move around so you don't stay in that discomfort and just get into more of a sensation of stretch and opening. And like every posture, there's ways to progress through it. If your body is interested today, you can come up on your hands. That usually helps me here. Bend your back knee and just see about catching onto your back foot. It might work, it might not work. Don't stress about it. If you happen to catch the foot, lean into the front hip. Start to square the hips off a little bit more if you can, coming into more of the more medial aspects of these quadriceps. Take a few deep breaths. sounds around you. And reach your back foot if you're holding it. And come back, frame your front foot. 
lift the hips up and up so the back toes will curl under and turn to your right. So you're going to bend the right knee and come into this posture we call skandasana. So the left leg is straight, right knee is bent. Allow the hips to shift back. There's a lot of ways to play in this. If you instantly went to something you like to do, I want you to do that. It's a different, fresh way to get into the hips. You can move to the side. From this point, what we're gonna do is push off the right leg. Come to the back of your mat in that low lunge. So you wanna separate the feet enough so you can get your upper body to sink down. And bring your way down to your elbows, your forearms, your block if you have that. Slide the right leg back so you get a little more maximized stretch in the hips. Allow your head and your jaw to relax. Feel free to stay just like this. Or you can take it to that deeper quad opening, touching onto your foot, squaring off your pelvis, and let the hips sink forward. Skandasana, back toes curled under, lift your leg and shift back to the, I guess you're going to the right. Bend the left knee this go around. Sink down. You can always put a block underneath your left hip if that's helpful. And again, just kind of move through any kind of angles or portions in the body to feel the stretch a little more effectively in the inner thighs and hips. more breaths. Use your hands to help you lift your hips up and come into a wide leg straddle fold. So feet might be set the way you want them, toes in, heels out. And let's take a breath, pull the chest forward, even shift the hips forward. Here comes my friend Merlin. And go ahead and bow down. Let the upper body go. Adjust the width of your feet so that you can get maximum kind of traction in the spine. Couple of breaths. Go ahead and come up into a halfway lift, press into your palms. Walk back around to the top of your mat. So you're going to frame the right foot. Step back to downward facing dog position. Up. Go ahead and lower the knees down together. Curl the toes under, feet and knees together. And come up and sit on your heels for, we'll call it happy toe pose today. Take your arms over your head. Eagle, left arm under. Wrap those arms up as an option. Maybe the fingers press into the right palm so you can turn the right pinky and lift the elbows. Take a deep breath in and expand that space between your shoulder blades. Give this one more big breath. Keep the arms up, lift your heel or lift your hips and untuck your toes. Hips come back to the ground or to the heel, sorry, and lean back in, lift your knees up, and kind of really get into the ankles and the toes, the front of the feet. Lower your knees, lift up your hips, and curl the toes under again. One more round. Even happier this time, yeah? 
So let's breathe in, reach up. Right arm under your left for eagle arm. Breathe in across the upper back. Deep breath. Inhale, rise the hips. Sweep the arms, untuck your toes. Have it sit down on your heels. And lean back one more time. Just kind of pick the knees up. Move around if that feels good. And forward to hands and knees. Downward facing dog. Pedal it out, then one knee at a time. Kind of complete that whole little sequence on the feet and ankles. Stretch out your toes. Bring both feet pretty balanced now. Look forward. You can step, you can jump, you can hop, however you like to come to seated. Set your feet on the ground and slowly roll onto your back. Set the feet right under your knees and allow your body just a moment here to relax and absorb the support. Breathe into the whole back body. So you want to reach down and you could probably touch the heels with your fingertips. That's about the distance. Ground the heels, lift the hips for bridge and roll under your shoulders. Create a space across the front of your chest that wasn't there a moment ago. You can ground the elbows. You can interlace your hands as we go here. Hug your legs towards the midline. Activate the heels out a bit. You can stay in bridge. It's a beautiful place to be. Just breath. If you would like to go to wheel, set your hands by your ears, palms flat. Press down, rise up. Heels flat or heels lifted to take some pressure off your low back today. Wherever you are, three good breaths. Exit slowly. Tuck your tail. Roll through your spine. Allow your body again to just rest on the earth. Absorb the support. And you can do one more back bend. So you can start and stay in bridge pose. You can slide a block under your sacrum for supported bridge pose. You can take wheel one more time. You are breathe for three. Relax your jaw. Two. One. Come down slow. Again, full body rest. Let's go around, bring the soles of your feet together, knees wide, scoop the Baddha Konasana. Rest the hand on your chest, one on your belly. Notice the breath coming in and out of your nose. And that natural rise and fall of your whole body as you breathe. So expand and release. Expand and release. Just a simple cycle. Bring your knees together, hug them into your chest. Drop your knees over to the left side and pull them up towards your shoulder. Reach your right arm over to the right. And look over your right shoulder. Switch sides. the 
knees back into the center. And for something inverted, you might take your legs up to the sky. If you have a block or a blanket or a pillow, you can slide that underneath your tailbone. Rest your arms in a configuration, not on a pine cone. That feels relaxing to the shoulders. If you have a practice of inversions and you would like to take any of those down, please feel free. Be okay with allowing your body to be restored. Be okay with maybe doing a little bit less. Notice your breath coming in and out through your nose, nice and slow. bring yourself back to the ground. Feet. Hmm. Lift the hips, take the block away if there's one there. And you can give yourself one final hug in if that felt good for you. And stretch out into a comfortable posture for Shavasana. Ha. <sighs> course, this is your practice, and if you would like to stay in a Shavasana for an extended period of time, you could simply hit pause, turn this off, and, and do that, or add anything into this practice to make it a little more um, valuable for your day today, depending on what's going on in your body. It's been lovely sharing this practice with you today. I encourage you to do something every day outdoors. Just roll your mat up by your poolside, on your driveway, your backyard, wherever you are, and just move your body in any way that you remember from your practice. It's all okay. Right. May we be at peace. May our hearts remain open. May we realize the light of our own true nature. May we be healed. May we be source of healing for others. Namaste.